On this video, we're gonna be talking about real estate budgeting, what you need to do to make sure you're ahead of the game and the biggest, biggest mistake that people do, I'm gonna tell you right at the end. First, make sure you guys like and subscribe, put a comment down below, let us know what some of your financial tips are on budgeting and how people can get ahead in life. Now, number one, what is your financial position? You need to assess this. How much are you earning a year? What is the potential for your career? Do you have a strong career path where you know that you're gonna continuously to get raises over the years to come? Do you love your job? Are you gonna stay at your job for a while? Are you happy overall with what you are doing day in, day out? Do you have a business? that is stressing you out? Do you have a business that you love and you wake up every single day and you feel like it's your purpose? These things are important because if you're going to go and buy your first property, but you don't like where you work, you don't have any real career path going forward, then it's definitely gonna dampen on the choices that you can have, not just now, but for the future. So understanding those things are very, very important. So to assess your financial situation, you need to do a couple of things. One, look at your salary, then take a look at the expenses that you have, and then look at what the type of lifestyle that you want. Now, if you understand how equity works, finding the right property in the right location can offer you some heightened results, even if you don't have that career path available, that is going to give you a lot of salary growth over the years. Because if you find a good property in a right location, that price appreciation could actually end up in the six figures as the years come on, which then allows you to buy more property with that equity. Next thing we need to do is subtract our expenses from our monthly salary, because then we're gonna get a real idea on exactly what can we afford every single month? Now, most of the world goes into the banks and they go and get a mortgage. And based on that mortgage, that is going to be their trajectory for real estate. So understanding what you can actually afford is important. And then what your actual expectations are going to be, because the last thing you want to do is have miscalculated expectations. It's going to make you sad, stressed, maybe unhappy, all of the above, because people get into these properties and they, they get told that they have one opportunity, one option, and the real case scenario is that banks are just trying to get you into as many mortgages as possible so that they can make all the money. And if you understand how mortgages work, your mortgage is actually basically money out of thin air. So if you understand how this works, you need to understand that your expectations are the most valuable thing in buying your first property. One of the other big things when you're getting a mortgage for your first property is how much can you put down for the down payment? This means how long are you going to save money for to be able to put down a 20% payment, a 10% payment, a 40% payment? It depends on what the deal is. Do you already have savings in your bank? Or is this now the first time you're seeing this video and you've got to figure out how many years you're going to save. It all comes down to what can you afford? What is your salary? That is going to determine what the value of the asset is available to you. Now, this all comes down to research. Research is the biggest thing in the real estate market. It takes time, it takes energy. It doesn't take any money, but your time is money and everyone needs to understand this. The biggest thing about research is is understanding what you want for this property. Do you want it to end up becoming an investment property or are you just gonna stay in this forever and then hopefully the price goes up and the valuation comes out so that you can refinance your loan and then you can pull equity out of that and then start your investment career. These things you need to know and understand and research because the research might not happen in your neighborhood. It might happen an hour away in a different neighborhood that's up and coming. Are you prepared to buy your first property an hour away where you've been growing up or two hours away? Or are you prepared to move to another city, another state even? These are the things that you need to research based on what's important to you, what's the lifestyle that you want, but then also what's going to happen in 20, 30 years and what do you want to happen in your life in 20 and 30 years? Now, the biggest mistake that people do on a daily basis is 
spend more than they earn. How many people do you know are bad with credit, have credit cards and just go out and buy continuously or go out and have a fancy car, have a fancy watch, always have their newest TV, their newest phone, yet they're not in a financial position where they could retire and they might have been doing this for years. The number one thing everyone should do is how can I lower my expenses because not everyone in the world earns 200 grand a year. The majority of people are not in the 1%, okay? The majority of people earn a salary that is comfortable, but to get and grow your financial position is actually a bit hard. And this will help dramatically if you live within your means. Don't spend money that you don't have. Don't use a credit card just to buy stuff that you wish you had. Live beneath your means so that you can grow your financial position because in your 20s, no one really gives a shit, okay? In your 30s, no one gives a shit at all, okay? What I'm trying to help you understand is live beneath your means, save, save, and then learn how to invest so that in your 40s, you're gonna have such a comfortable position. Your kids, if you have them, might either be 20 years old, they might be 10 years old, they might be five years old. But at least you're now in a better position so that you have bought your property at the start of your career and 10, 20, 30 years later, you have learned the craft of how the real estate game works. You are now living very comfortably and you're able to teach your kids how money works so that they can have a brighter future as well and use the real estate game and the real estate industry to their advantage because you have learned to lead by example. And ladies and gentlemen, that is probably one of the most valuable things that you could do for your generations to come. Thanks for watching, go like and subscribe if you wanna give your generation the tools of the trade so that they can live a better life as well.